fine piece of property with a little work and attention. Too bad to see it go for a song, sir. Too bad for you, Daltrey, I'd say. Yeah. Jim Connor Club. You see. But Simpson, old fellow, I told you I did not see. But my dear Reginald, you must see. But how can I see when I don't see? <laughs> but that's just the point. If you did, you could. But I told you I didn't, old fellow. But, but my dear boy, there you are again. Hello. Hello. Well, Anyone about? Hello, Waysmith. We are going to be officially rid of that bound adultery at last. Poor devil, it'll be only a memory soon. And a jolly bad one. He should have been expelled from the club long ago. Rules, my dear Everard, rules. This country's a stickler for rules. And honor, old fellow. <laughs> Without it, none of us could live in this beastly climate. What? Well, stuffy in here, eh? Hey there. Punker Ah, oh, that's better. What's the difference? It doesn't cool off this climate to keep it moving. Uh, scotch and soda might. How about it? Uh, Scudge and soda. Twice. Seen the evening paper? Same as yesterday's, isn't it? All except the shipping news. What's new about that? Nobody but cooks, tourists, and missionaries would be foolish enough to stick their heads into this furnace. Mm, well, I'd hardly call Hugh Daltrey a missionary. Daltrey? Daltrey? That's the gentleman. Here's his name on the next boat's passenger list. Coming back to Kota? He wouldn't have the crust. I can't believe that's true. Well, he had trust enough to say this club was an old lady's home. And to say it right to our faces. Why didn't he keep out of it, then? He did, most of the time. Seemed to like the homes of the younger ladies much better. <laughs> A man who won't respect the moral code down here doesn't belong. There's no law against stealing other men's wives if they want to be stolen. But you don't have to associate with the thief. We made that plain enough before he cleared out. Well, <laughs> deserves a drink. This unexpected homecoming. I wonder what he's coming back for. Oh, that plantation of his, probably. <clears throat> Stubborn fun, adultery. Needs a good discipline. You're quite right, Waysmith. No woman is safe here if we tolerate rotters like adultery. There you go. Here's to you. Cheerio. Nice. Yes, sir. Our steward, uh, uh, the young lady who sits at this table, she uh, seems to be dining rather late this evening, huh? I'm sorry, sir, but Miss Crosby had dinner served in her stateroom. Oh. Well, uh, in that event, I'll, uh, I'll just have some coffee. Yes, sir. Uh, on deck. Yes, sir. Will you have breakfast here, sir, or at your own table? I'll answer that one in the morning. Yes. English lighter. You should be ashamed of yourself. A person would think that one flame would be enough for you without annoying every lady you see. You even make them dine in stuffy cabins to avoid you. I'm going to make you apologize if I ever meet the charming lady. Meantime, I think I'll drown you in a tall brandy and soda for being so rude.
leave the bottle. Why didn't you take me out? So we'd lose the rubber, my dear. Oh, Cyril, really, you It's too <laughs> confounded hot for bridge. Sir, you know, I'll never... I'm too hot to argue about it. Oh, Your first trip out here? No, but it's my last. The tropics is no place for a white man, unless he has no place else to go. Well, bridge helps. Playing solitaire is a lonely game out here. You know, Cyril, you ought to stick to dummy or heart for something like Well, I'm to... sorry, my dear. I didn't deal the cards, you know. But I'll never part well, with you. Well, all right, I don't want to play the game. The there you are. Thank you, sir. I hope you've had a pleasant voyage. Thank you. We've docked, sir. It's as plain as a London fog. I know, my dear Simpson, I know. But I can't see through it. Then if it wasn't so plain, you could. I know you could. But that is just why I can't, old fellow. Beastly climate, sir. Coat is the hottest port we make. Perhaps I shan't mind it. Goodbye, sir. Thank you again. Goodbye. Good luck. It gets rather damp. Uh, won't you join me? Hello. Hello, hello. If you're not careful, you'll fall out of that funny thing and break your neck. And you'll be drowned. So why not take this umbrella and save both our lives? take an umbrella from someone whom I never expect to see again. Well, most people do just that. It's an international custom. So are introductions. I wonder how Adam met Eve. It was probably raining. Oh, not any harder than this, surely. Uh, Rocco, Rocco. Uh, now, see here. Anyone can see that you are a stranger here. And uh, since you have a corner on transportation... Where may I take you? You may drop me at number 17, Porter Road East. Se 17, Porter Road East. Good. Yes, you got it. The rain has stopped. Do you think we need the umbrella any longer? Oh, the sun is just as bad. You know, when this country gets tired of parboiling you, it begins baking you till you're done to a crisp. <laughs> what a charming future. <laughs> oh, of course, I am uh, taking it for granted that you are going to be here for some time. You're taking a lot for granted, aren't you? Um, uh, I thought I thought. Well, 
This is it. I'll uh, help you in. Oh, I Oh, I Oh, rich uh, coletado. Bus, sir? Huh. He uh, said for us to go right in and uh, make ourselves at home. Here we are. The servant seems to know you, Mr. Daltrey. Oh, yes, yes. I'm a frequent visitor here. Uh, where is everybody, do you suppose? Well, there are only three places in this town where they could be. Uh, the bar of the club, the card room of the club, or the swimming pool of the club. You say they were expecting you? I cabled them, of course. Oh, well, uh, delivering the cable in Kota is quite another matter. Sometimes we get our Christmas greetings by Easter. You are an optimist. Uh, trying to be. There goes your limousine. Oh, yes, yes, I, uh, uh, I sent it away. Well, how do you expect to get home? Now, I'll walk. Uh, uh, my bungalow is uh, very close. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, uh, uh, isn't that a lovely skin? Yes, it is. I'll see if I can't dig up something to drink. Doesn't George look funny? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Your, your brother was an intern when that was taken. Yeah, they all look funny until practicing medicine makes them look worse. <laughs> Is that why you're still a bachelor, Dr. Muir? That and my pocketbook. Oh. Mm, George is lucky. I couldn't find a girl who would wait for me until I'd made my success and could send for her. Oh, mm. Dr. Muir. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I think these native women have babies at the most unexpected times and places. Well, where's the bride? Isn't she with you? Well, an emergency call came to the hospital just as I was leaving, so I sent Ollie down to the dock in the car to meet her. She should be here now. The car's outside. Ollie! Ollie! Come in. Where are you? What are you doing out here? Nothing, sir. Did you go to the boat as I told you? Yes, sir. I go now. You've been at the gin again, haven't you? No, sir. I've been at boat and I see nobody. Don't lie to me, you sneaking heathen. Oh, George, George, I don't tell you. I will not tolerate drunken servants. It's your Everybody has got to keep his place in this country. What will Phil think of us? Nobody at the boat to meet her. Poor girl, she's probably standing at the dock now. Well, come on, some of you. I'll get the hat. Never mind, will you? What in the country is worth oh. Poor Phil, Standing down there on the dock among other Thank you. What? But my dear Timmy, it was a leopard. No, my dear Reggie, it was an elephant. I say it was an elephant. It was an elephant. A leopard. An elephant. Rene, you can drive faster than this. Oh, she's driving quite fast enough for me. Ah, Boat must be in all right. Daltrey's home. What's that about Daltrey? You're so busy with the old hospital, you don't even hear any news. News? What news? Daltrey's coming back today. Up on the same boat with Philippa? They can't limit the passenger list to women. An outrage. Men like Daltrey shouldn't be at large. Cigarette? I prefer Turkish. He looks like such a well-behaved little lighter. I can hardly believe all the gossip about him. Perhaps I was talking about myself. Must you prove it? I had no chance aboard the boat. And you consider Dr. March's house a more suitable place? This isn't Dr. March's house. I don't understand. 
I lied to you. This is my house. And just why did you bring me here? To get acquainted. You were such a stranger aboard the boat. I'm still a stranger. I hope you won't be after dinner. Now, my houseboy is really a very excellent cook. And I suppose his master is an excellent entertainer. Ah, that depends upon the audience. The audience is leaving without any sign of applause. And does this also uh, ring down the curtain on some future engagement? I'm afraid so, since I came here to end one by marrying Dr. George March. You are going to marry him? Yes. Well, I'll see you along, of course. No, thank you. I've had enough of guides. It's the next plantation. Thank you. Just a neighborly step. <laughs> now, my dear, where are you going for your honeymoon? Why, really, I don't know yet, Mrs. Waysmith. Where are we going, George? Going? Uh, going where? On your honeymoon, Doctor. Oh. <laughs> Well, we're beyond such juvenile customs as that, aren't we, dear? See, Philippa was a nurse at St. Mary's when I was house surgeon there. Oh, yeah. I see. We've more important things than honeymoons to think about, haven't we? We've a lot to talk over, eh, Phil? And the bungalow's been all done over. Dressed up in your honor. New curtains and, uh, uh, You did get new curtains, didn't you, Renee? Yes, George. New curtains and twin beds. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Doctor Sir Mew. Oh, come yeah. in, Doc. Come in. Oh. oh. Hello, can I lend a hand? And you might hold a leg. Cut. Bite. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all, Doc. My hospitality is a byword in Kota. So your unexpected homecoming. Well, you're a little late for a welcoming committee, aren't you, Doc? I'm just acting as postboy. Your club box was full of mail, so I brought it up. Oh, thanks. We can't get away from the London Times, can we? My guess is about as close as you intend to get to London for a while, by the look of things. Oh. What's the use of carrying on in this place with, with every door closed against you? Ah, forget it, Doc. All right, old laddie, what do you say? Now, let that be a lesson to you. Hereafter, don't you get too gay with young Johnny Crocodile. Uh, on your way. You better have one, Doc. No, 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 too soon after luncheon. Well, sit down and watch me, then. Wagering on my capacity is the latest indoor sport at the Gymkhana Club. Now that I'm again a member in good standing, you must have a very good reason to stay on here in the face of everything. Uh, perhaps I have. A very good one. Oh. Another scandal like that, uh, <laughs> that last one might prove serious. The Doris Drayton divorce case is still news. Uh. Men here are very down on you, Daltrey. Are you? Hmm? <laughs> no. Confound it. An old bachelor like me can afford to be neutral. And anyway, you remind me too much of myself. Yourself? Hmm. I mean, the self I'd like to have been at your age if I'd had your courage and your technique. You cad. <laughs>
George. Sorry. Thought you were asleep. Come. Found that chair always in the middle of the room. I don't know. Until every night the same thing happens. I can put it You should wear a tail light also. Well, what do you mean? What's funny about bumping my shin? Go look at yourself. If there were any place to go and told it this time of the night, I'd think you were tight. <laughs> my reflector. And I looked everywhere for it before I left the hospital. But it's a wonder I didn't forget my head. Well, why? What happened? A sacrococcygeal tumor. You don't tell me. Sounds like a new kind of lockjaw. Oh, please. Now, this is no joke. Just imagine finding a sacrococcygeal tumor right here in Coda. Just imagine it. Well, I've never really looked for one very hard. Oh, they're very rare. You don't bump into them everywhere. They're as rare as spondylitis deformants. I haven't seen one for, yes, five years. You remember when you were nursing at St. Mary's back home? But you must remember your first surgical case. I gave the anesthetic. Oh, but this is much worse than that was. Oh, this is, look, Phil. It's affected all these vertebrae. But I want to show you. It's affected all these vertebrae down to the coccyx bone. Oh, stop. You're hurting me. Not there. Everywhere. What's the matter, Phil? Don't you feel well? Perhaps I have a patient right here at home, and I've been too busy to notice it. A doctor's family usually does come last, doesn't it? Let me see your tongue. Oh, please. I'm all right. Go to bed. I hope so. You should have seen that tumor. It was a beauty. I wouldn't have missed finding it for ten club dances. like that puts fire into a man. <sighs> it seems to go out before you get home. What you need is a change, something to occupy your mind. How would you like to nurse this case? Mm -hmm. Work together as we used to. Hey. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I'm never going back to it, George, never. Not for a moment. I came out here to be a wife, not a nurse. flushed your face is. It must be excitement. Excitement? Who oh, wouldn't be excited? Another dinner at the Jim Connor Club with the same old Nico to take me and the same fussy old people to dance with. I think I'll create a diversion and go like this. Renee. Oh, it is a bore. You know it. You're too young to be bored. Married people aren't the only ones who suffer that way. And you're much too young to be cynical. <laughs> what are you grinning at? Oh, I was just thinking how frightfully funny it would be if you didn't really care for George at all. If secretly you thought he turned out to be an awful sinker. Sinker? Yes, you know, blob. It might be funny if we didn't have to spend the rest of our lives together. I imagine you are the kind who would take a marriage contract desperately seriously. Oh, I suppose George is all right as husbands go. But if I were married, I'd want my husband with me always. You hardly ever see him unless you go to the hospital and sit in that smelly waiting room full of native patients. Nope, I'm sorry. 
George is my brother, but he's not my type for a husband. Renee March, what have you been reading? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Phil. There's a sweet papa now. We mustn't come in here. Renee. Where is everybody? In here, but you can't come in. But it's about these place cards for Renee's birthday dinner. Oh, he pokes his fingers into everything. George is a doctor, my dear. Renee, do you hear me? Get into your dress before he pokes himself in here. What is it, George? Well, is this some joke? What are you talking about? These place cards. Daltrey's name is among them. You mean you, Daltrey? Well, there can't be more than one Daltrey in Cota, I hope. Didn't you make these out? Why, uh, of course, but... You can't be serious about it. Well, from the fuss you're making, it must be terribly serious. I think it's going to be thrilling. But you don't mean to tell me that you sent him an invitation to your birthday dinner. Well, why shouldn't we? Now, please, Phil, you haven't been here long enough to know about Daltrey. But I can't understand such an oversight on Renée's part. Surely she must have heard. But Renée didn't send out all the invitations. I helped her. You sent it? I'm quite sure I did. Well, he's our next-door neighbor. But he's strictly taboo. You forget that Phil is still a stranger here. Why, she hasn't even met the gentleman. And she's not going to be placed in a position where she has to? But he's probably the most interesting man in town. They say Dari Straton followed him all over the Orient after she left her husband. And you're not going to meet him either. Stop growling, you old bear. He wants to meet him anyway. What's that awful smell? Hmm? Oh, antiseptic. New case of malaria broke out. What is it? Pain Sahib is here, Ma'am Sahib. There's Nikki. I must run. I hope Dolce gets gloriously drunk and makes love to every woman in the place, including me. Renee! Now, look here, Phil. Something has got to be done. Why worry about something that can't be undone? It's, but it's Renee. She's just at the impressionable age. And I suppose this notorious Daltrey person is just at the dangerous age. You don't understand, Phil, or you wouldn't try to shield her. Shield, Renee? You don't suppose I believe for a moment that you sent that invitation? Of course I did. But if the poor man knows how hospitable you feel about him, he probably won't accept anyway. No. Perhaps you're right. And perhaps you'd better dress for dinner before it's too late. Hmm. Suppose he does come. But I thought we just decided that he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. yes, all right. Now, uh, let me see. How about Dr. Yeah, yeah. Hospital, I suppose. It was the Duke's brother. But you're wrong, old lady. It was his cousin. But my dear fellow, I assure you, it was the Duke's brother. Well, I know, but you told me that for oh. a minute. Anybody here, Doctor? Yes. I think it's the hospital. Get me a whiskey and soda. Oh, uh, very mild. Yes? Dr. March speaking. Yes, yes, I'm listening. Sure, I detect whiskey in that. Oh, Miss Waysmith, just a little bit to the right. I shall still be in the picture. Oh, of course. Good heavens. What is it? Daltrey. With the usual liquid cargo aboard, it'll sink him one of these days. Mr. Daltrey, isn't it? Uh, good evening. Uh, Miss March. You're ultra-fashionable, aren't you, Mr. Daltrey? Well, not too late to wish you a happy birthday, I hope. We, uh, we'd about given you up. I can hardly blame you. Everyone in Kota has done that. Quiet, please. Oh. oh. Well, I'm, uh, I'm holding up a picture. <laughs> so sorry. Now look pleasant, please. Everybody smile. Now, very still. One, two, three, four, five. 
That's very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Dance, and it's a tango. Don't you love it, Mr. Daltrey? Come on, Rennie, old dear. My dance. Shall we dance this? I... Really, I... You must smash that plate. I'm afraid... Of what? Nobody moves, sir. Back. It's too bad you missed the picture. Yes, yes. Hospital, you know. Yes, you doctors. You're such busy creatures. Shall we dance? Uh, delighted, Mrs. Waysmith, but I, I don't tango. Oh, I'll teach you, George. It's quite simple. <laughs> This is the new one. Yeah. And this is the step that matches it. You'd rather do the straight tangle. Right. Then we go... You are bored, aren't you? On the contrary. Have a cigarette? Your brand on that side. No, thanks. There won't be time. You, uh, enjoy Kotar society then, huh? I thought you might, for a change. Am I living down to my reputation? I never believe all I hear. So you invited me here to find out, huh? I doubt if you're half as bad as they think you. Oh, yes? In my bungalow, you had me at a disadvantage. You were unprotected then. And now that I'm married? I thought I wouldn't entirely disappoint you. Since I'm here on parade. You... You think that? Is there any other reason that would prompt you to invite me here as your guest? No, no, you were right in the first place. Bill, where are you? Here I am, George. Are you in the habit of dancing with ladies that you've never met? Only when the lady is my hostess. Oh, sorry, Daltrey. This is my wife, Mrs. March. It's a pleasure. Now that we really know each other, come along, Phil. Good night, Mr. Daltrey. Now, I hope you won't think me rude, uh, tearing myself away like this without even one dance with your sister. I hope you'll excuse me, George. I'd never excuse you if you did dance with my sister. Well, in that event, I can go home with perfectly clear conscience. Oh, Mr. Dante. <laughs> so that's where you've been hiding. <laughs> We all wondered what had become of you. Well, I hardly call it hiding, Mrs. Waysmith. Oh, I should. With such divine music. Mm. Uh, do you tango, Mr. Dalton? No, uh... Oh, well, I know you do. After having just seen you with our hostess. Oh. Come with me, yes, and I'll show you something. I could dance like this forever with you. My husband is so jealous. Oh, yes, I can understand that. Oh, George, George, I have, I have my new shoes on. Oh, did I step all over them? Well, there may be one tiny spot you've missed. Well, let's chuck it. No, George. No, I, I insist on finishing it. Dr. Mark says I'm like a feather. I'm so light on my feet. 
Uh, whose feet? <clears throat> Would that be all, sir? Yes, good night, Carl. Oh, did you open another bottle of brandy and uh, leave some ice? Yes, I have. And your bed also very cool now. No use trying to sleep with those drums going. What is that? Funeral or wedding? No, sir. It's love feast to the goddess Karuni. All our young men take brides at this time. It lasts uh, one, two, three, four days. Long enough for most marriages. Yes, sir. to get up. There's a lot to do today. Phil. You up so early? do you want? Have you seen Phil? She went out riding. Said she couldn't sleep all night. Needed some fresh air. Oh, why didn't she tell me? <laughs> she told me to tell you. Uh, I can't understand Phil these last few weeks. She acts as though she's contracting a fever. Mrs. Waysmith says it's the heat. Well, that cooled me off a bit. Cooled you off? I said a bit. <laughs> the only thing that'll cool me off is a peg at the bar, eh? I'll have a stinger with you, too. All right. Uh -huh. Waysmith. Everard. Duckworth. Some new game? No. Oh. Just killing off a few pests. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah. March. Huh? I beg your pardon. Granted. Have a drink. I've better things to do than hang around a club drinking. Until then, Doctor, your health. I preserve mine with plenty of brandy. Brandy and uh, early morning rides. Nothing like horseback riding to pep you up, George. Gives you a new lease on life. You should follow my example. Yeah. 
that you, Phil? Hello, George. Ready. Where have you been? Uh, j just riding. What are you doing here? Uh, waiting for Phil. We're going to have luncheon together. The club is no place for a young girl alone. My, how cross you are. Where do you want me to wait? In the pool? Well, not in here, at any rate. Under the circumstances. Oh, thought I forgot something. Telephone, Miss Mart. Now hurry it up, will you? I'll be waiting at the car. But I have my horse. It's all right. Hurry up Hello. and get right home. All right. Hello. Oh, hello, Nico. No, I haven't forgotten. Goodbye. Where did you ride this morning? I didn't see you. Ah, lonely men take lonely paths. Do you always ride alone? Sometimes the horse goes with me. Silly. I love riding. But, uh, why does everyone start out at the crack of dawn? Well, you know what they say about the early bird. I suppose the lazy ones only catch the heat. And a scolding from their big brothers for going out in it. George isn't my keeper. I belong to no one but myself. The safest possible companionship for very young ladies. But it isn't much fun. Belonging to oneself. Don't you try to vamp me, young woman. Uh... I could, easily. Well, if this keeps on, I shall either have to turn you over my knee or run for home. In the first place, I'd scream. In the second, I'd run after you. I've been dying to see your bungalow anyway. You wouldn't like it. Orgies, terrible going on. I wouldn't be a bit frightened, even of being alone with you. In my bungalow. Uh-huh. Wouldn't it be thrilling? I think there's something wonderful about a secret shared by two people. It certainly gives the rest of the community something to talk about. Must you treat me like a child? I hope not. Because I don't want to have to spank you. Boo! What a fierce ogre. Well, I really am. But I don't spend my leisure eating up baby sisters. You little mug. Oh, you! You're the most annoying person. Suppose your brother walked in here and heard you call the notorious Hugh Daltrey by his first name. But he won't. He's going away. George is? Yes. He sailed this evening to take a special patient to the hospital in Colombo. Well, I'll have to send him some flowers to wish him bon voyage. It's a nice basket of fruit. What kind does George like best? I wish you'd forget, George. I intend to. So do I. And also stay out as late as I wish while he's gone. You'll find that a rather boring privilege with no place to go. Oh, yeah? You're wrong, old man. I'm right, my darling. Oh, no, you're wrong. Oh, I'm right. It was in the spring of 1864. 65. 64. 65. Nice to hear that piano again. Oh, hello, George. You look much better. I was afraid you were coming down with a fever, but not with those sparkling eyes. You look quite your old self today. Do I, George? It's nice to hear you say that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm worried about Renee. Well, you always have to worry about something. Are you lunching with her? Why, no. I haven't seen Renee since early this morning. Then she lied to me. About what? About everything. Do you know what she's been doing this morning? She's been riding with Daltrey. But that's impossible. I... Why is it impossible? Uh, well, I, I mean, it's absurd. Why, Renee is just a child. She's 18. That's a woman in the tropics. But, George... This heat is bad enough on married women. But on young girls, it's dynamite. Makes the man crazy. Oh, really, George? I know what I'm talking about. It's a pathological fact. <laughs> well, has it another long name, or do you just call it a heat wave? Now, please, Phil, this is no laughing matter. And it means danger with men like Daltrey around. Really, George, you're precious. I'm not wrong, though. 
And you can tell Renee to pack her bag because I'm going to take her to Colombo with me. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, our weekend trip to the mountains is off. Business before pleasure, my dear. Then you're going to Colombo instead. I see. And you're taking Renee with you. Yes, so I can keep my eye on her. For me? Yes, my shade. Just the mail. For me, isn't it? No, George. Oh, George! What is it? I wish you'd come here and help me pack. I can't find a thing. All right, George, but uh, do you think taking Renee with you is exactly wise? You know I'll be here alone. That's all alone and with her on your hands. She's too much of a responsibility. I'm not going to ask you to play detective. Where are my socks and my clean shirts? I can't find a one. Are you coming, Phil? Yes, George, I'm coming. place to go after all. Well, a childish, I should say. I'm old enough to know that when a man like you says no to a woman, he really means yes. And besides, I like your scotch. So I see. And I like your bungalow. But I couldn't find an orgy any place. Now, that's nice. And now that you've seen everything... Oh, but I haven't. Not everything. What's this room? That's where I sleep. Oh, how thrilling. Well, I've never found sleep so thrilling. Except in Kota. I don't believe you're half as bored as you always pretend. No? Just careful. I am. Very careful. Now, shall I call you a rickshaw or will you walk home? But I'm not ready to go home yet. Now I know how you fascinate all the women. You make them think you don't want them when you really do all the time. Or, uh, are you afraid of me? Oh, um, Mr. Daltrey. Oh, where are we going? What are you going to do? Oh, oh you must be standing there. Where else, my sweet? Oh, let me go, I'll scream. Let me go, let me go. Oh, let me go. Well, for a woman with experience in such matters, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I think I am, too. Well, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Daughtry. I, I had a nice time. <laughs> so, my suspicions were right. This is where you've been. But I haven't, really. I... I just dropped by from the club. You haven't been at the club for over an hour. I've been looking for you every place. Hmm. Well, I... Uh, I hope we haven't made an old maid of her. But, George... What are you doing here in Daltrey's bungalow? Nothing. That is, I... 
I came to borrow a phonograph record. Will you go home and pack? Because you're coming with me to Colombo. Now hurry. Yes, George. Well. Paula. Been waiting long? Daltrey, my sister was just here. You don't tell me. Well, now I am sorry I wasn't home. Lucky for you, you weren't. Unlucky, I should say. This has gone far enough, Daltrey. Now, I'll tell her, Annie, the next time I see her... There'll be no her. next time. And if I ever see you even talking to her... You're I'm... going to have another patient if you don't stop your talk about me. That is, if you're contortionist enough to patch your own rather boring face. Now, get out. And stay out of my affairs until they concern you. If they ever do, Daltrey, I'm coming back here with a gun. Rene, can't you hurry? We have plenty of time. But my patient aboard. the captain to hold the boat. What on earth is the matter now? The patient died. And we're not sailing? There's no use now. But you couldn't help it, dear. Every doctor must lose some patient. Yes, you don't understand, Rene. This one had a sacrococcygeal tumor. I'd have been photographed with it. All the medical journals would have mentioned my name. Come, George. Perhaps you'll find another disease with a much longer name right here at home. Angry? I should be, shouldn't I? Ah, but it's such a kissable little girl. You know I think you're rather nice. Almost too nice for all the things they say about you. You know what I think? No, tell me. Shall I? Well, perhaps not. Now. Those drums. They've been going incessantly for the past two nights. It's a native feast to Kronu. She's their goddess of love. Some hideous idol, I suppose. No, this goddess was rather human. A virtuous lady who sneaked off to Earth for one night to taste sin. Was she forgiven? She found love. For only one night? That's where she ceased to be human. And what happened to this very modern goddess of love? After her one night, she went back to her spirit world. Childly sort of legend, isn't it? Yes. No woman could go back after that. You. Oh, please, you. Philippa, you love me. Yes, I'm afraid I do. And I love you. Do you? Believe me. Oh, I want to believe you. Even though I shouldn't. You mean... My dear, sometimes even reputations have false faces. Wasn't Dora Strayton a misunderstood wife also? Not only misunderstood, but misguided. By her trust in a certain man? 
by her appraisal of that man's feelings for her. Surely you weren't one of those innocent correspondents. Not from any virtuous inclination on my part. I simply never wanted Doris Drayton, not even for a moment. But she spent the night in your bungalow, the third night of her honeymoon. On the strength of her own convictions. And I suppose your strength of will... ...was not enough to convince the newspapers and the court differently in the face of appearances. Besides, Doris didn't want vindication. She wanted a divorce. I was only her tool to get it. And after that night, what happened? Well, her father and I went on a glorious jag. Her father? Finished up in China. There weren't two drunker men in the Orient. A bit maudlin, wasn't it? You call that maudlin? Don't you? I think it's the nicest ending to a story I ever heard. be a much nicer ending to ours. A boat sails tomorrow at dawn for Singapore and the Far East. I'm going to let you write the last chapter of ours. If it ends without one, I'll understand. In bed, probably, at this hour. And that's where you're going, young lady. Good night, you cross patch. Good night. And don't wake Phil. Well, where is Phil? Probably the club. Where else could she be in this town? Do you suppose I should call the club? What's that you have there? Uh, nothing. Will you please go to bed and stop worrying about Phil and me? That's a letter. What is? That piece of paper you're trying to hide. But, George... And it's from that rather adultery. I see it all now. You had a date with him. That's why you didn't want to go to Colombo. Don't be silly. Let me see it. No, let me see it. Come, now, let me George, see it. Don't, give don't it to me. Don't I'll, I'll give it to me. Let me have it. Concern you at all. This is entirely my Please business. Now, leave me alone. Me... It's between me and my wife. how differently those drums sound. There's a certain music in them, isn't there? Philippa? Yes, dear? I want to talk to you. Please, not now. Much wiser now than later. Are you afraid I'll be sorry? Yes, I am. Like all the others. Don't, dear. I want to forget all that. But you don't want to be forgotten, as they were. But you couldn't if you loved me. I do now. But there's always the chance that it won't last with a man like me. 
I've never known anything deeper than a conquest. This has suddenly turned out to be something else. But if we love each other, what else is there? For you, nothing. But, dear... Philippa, I lied to you about Doris Drayton. I really did break up a home. Thought I wanted her, then found I didn't. I'm not going to leave another Doris Drayton behind me. Now you're just being heroic. And I don't want you to be. She furnished the heroics the other time. Took her lover so seriously, his departure left the door open to many lovers. That's her only consolation. She wasn't the kind who could go back either. I'm not afraid. If a woman can't hold a man, it's her own fault. But the risk is there. I won't let you take it. Oh, it's not much of a risk for happiness. Do you think I'm going to give it up because of a noble gesture? George! That door leads to the hall. You can go out the back way without being seen. But I'm not leaving. But you can't let him find you here. That's just what I am going to do. Philippa, think what this means to you. This isn't the time or the place for heroics. That's just what I said a moment ago. And I'm not going to let you make any more noble gestures for me. George, this is a surprise. It's meant to be. Where's my wife? But how should I know? Don't lie to me. I know Phil's here. Oh, well, unfortunately, she didn't accept that invitation. None of your family will allow me to repay your gracious hospitality. I feel very badly about it. Someone dined here? Yes, but the identity of my dinner guests is hardly any of your business. When the guest is my wife, it becomes my business. She's here someplace. You're right, as usual, George. What are you doing here? Well, if I answer you truthfully, it will force me to a very embarrassing admission. This is no time for evasions. Neither is it the time to ask awkward questions. I'm in earnest, Phil. In dead earnest. I also was in earnest. But Mr. Daltrey... Refused me. Refused you? But I don't understand what you mean. You couldn't with the opinion you have of Hugh Daltrey. You're just trying to shield him. Must you make a scene? Not with you. We'll have ours at home, I suppose. As usual. No, Phil. There's going to be no scandal in my house. But Daltrey is leaving Cota for good. And so am I, George. And I'm also leaving you. I came out here in search of love and happiness. I found instead a machine, a machine of cold steel, as cold as the instruments you use to probe into the bodies of unconscious patients on operating tables. Nursing hadn't changed me from a woman, but surgery in the tropics had changed the man I came to marry. So I turned to Hugh Daltrey for the love and affection you didn't give me. If I didn't know that you were suffering from a pathological complaint common to the tropics, I should think you were neurotic. It's just a physical heat wave. And that cad took advantage of it. But not of me, George. You did that. All you wanted was a wife. Any woman would have done as well. And some other woman can take my place from now on. I was going away with Hugh Daltrey. But he refused to put me in the position of Doris Drayton. He said he loved me too much. You swine. Perhaps my heroics were a mistake after all. Men have such different and peculiar definitions of love. To a woman, there can be only one meaning. To be loved. Goodbye, George. But you can't leave me like this. Oh, you'll get over it. You may even find another sacrococcygeal tumor to comfort you. Who knows? But what will people say? My name, my reputation. I'm taking the boat that leaves at dawn for Singapore. And nothing you can say or do will stop me. 
Philippa! I said you were leaving Kota. Decided to get rid of me at last, is that it? For good, Daltrey, and I meant it. I'm glad you did. Because that fits in with my plans exactly. But you may be going to quite a different place than you anticipate. Yes? Yes. I'm going to kill you, Daltrey. And when they know the truth, they'll all cheer me for it. Now, before you do, uh, uh, do you mind if I finish? I have a horror of an undertaker dressing me. I've never known one yet who could tie a bow correctly. I'm not Sam Drayton. You can't make me the laughingstock of Kota and then brazen your way out of it. The laugh is really on me, George. For the first time in my life, I've made a fool of myself over a woman. Because I thought she was making a fool of herself over me. But even an attempt at fidelity on my part will be better than letting a wonderful woman like Philippa shrivel up and rot in this hole like the rest of you. So I've decided to take your wife away from you. You're going to shoot me, George. Now's your last chance. Because I'm leaving to take that same boat for Singapore. I'm sorry, old fellow, but you'll have to find a new partner in crime. From now on, I'm a one-flame man. Cheerio. 